bishop could go up to h. Um, later when we play some blitz and you guys can ask her anything that is appropriate, okay? <laughs> Hello, happy Saturday. So it's about 8.30 um, and I just got back. I did not end up writing any on the way home. It is day 25 of NaNoWriMo. And I did say that I was gonna get through act two today. I don't really know if that's gonna happen, gonna be honest, but we're not talking about that because today I thought what I would do, instead of doing kind of a typical writing vlog, I thought I would do like, a desk writing area tour. I had a couple people request it and I thought, you know what, might as well. Oh, hi, Alyssa, writing. First off, I guess just like the desk itself, it has these little drawers, this little drawer and like some cabinets. Um, I got this desk. Well, I don't know. I've always just had it. When did I get this desk? Um, comment down below because I've had it since I was like a little kid though. Um, or it's been in my house and then it was mine. I don't know where this desk came from. Now that I'm really thinking about it, no idea. I think it was part of like a furniture set that came with a dresser or something. So that's the desk itself. And then if we move to other hardware, I've been using a walking pad. This one I just got, um, it's a deer run. I don't know. I just went on Amazon and typed in walking pad and this was, I think, the cheapest one. Makes that lovely beeping noise. And then you control it with this remote and it has, well, now it's gonna start going. All the way to three, I think. Oh, it goes higher than three? Rotates between the speed the time, the distance, and then the calories burned, which is like such pseudoscience, like don't believe that for a second. You do not need this. I'm just gonna tell you that right now. The reason I got it is because I got it when I was in college and um, I think I got it for Christmas actually and I use it for a lot of things, but if you're just like dictating or even if you just like need a microphone, you don't need it because you can just get like a Yeti or something else that plugs directly into your computer. I use this because I do like more advanced audio things. So it, how it works is this is the microphone and the um, arm that, it, and this is an XLR cord that plugs in. And then the, if, if you follow the red line, <laughs> right, it goes to this station. And so um, this has all these controls. So it's not on right now, but it's a lot of like more advanced audio tech um, and it also connects to these headphones as well. So these headphones are like a, a quarter jack rather than a just like regular headphone. So that's how everything kind of connects there. The regular Joe Schmo doesn't need it. Even if you want like a professional mic, I would go with something that plugs directly into your computer because there's a lot of settings that I mean, you can learn them if you really want to get serious with it. That's what I use for dictation, but I also like my computer just works well for dictation anyway. Like the microphone is good. Speaking of my computer, let's go to that. So I have the Dell um, X, ooh, it's like XPS 15 or something. You do not need this computer. <laughs> this is just like a video, what, like I, I'm de-influencing you. Um, here's who needs this computer if you are doing a lot of high-end video editing. This is like, that's what this computer is built for, is built for motion graphics and color correction and Premiere. It's built for advanced video editing because um, at the time, I bought it during school when I was editing a lot of video projects and it was an investment and it is definitely very expensive and also um, has served me very well and will continue to, but it has really good storage. But if you're not doing like, even if you're like editing videos on iMovie, you don't need this computer. This is for like layered motion graphics, very intense like video editing where you need to be rendering a lot very constantly. And so I got it and 
mostly for work, but it works really well for everything else. So if, I mean, if you're looking for a really high end heavy duty computer, like if maybe if you're streaming and you don't have a PC, um, cause I don't have a piece, like a game, like if you want to game, it might be good too. But if you're just looking for a writing computer, I do not recommend. <laughs> I mean, it writes, it does the job, but you don't need this computer unless you want to do some really high end video stuff. I also have this just classic Seagate two terabyte hard drive plugged into the docking station. It's a different, separate docking station. So this plugs into my computer and this is my, um, like my mouse, my hard drive, and then my um, keyboard. So this just stores a lot of my, it's a backup and I also store all my video files on here. So just some extra storage, you can get it at Walmart. <laughs> I have this, I don't know where it's from. Deluxe? I don't know who that is. But it <laughs> is an ergonomic keyboard. How I buy things most of the time, audio equipment and computer was different, but everything else, I type into the internet, ergonomic keyboard. And then I look at it and I'm like, sure. <laughs> then I purchase it. I mean, I read the reviews um, and I kind of compare, but I don't do a lot of heavy research or anything. So that's what this is. And it also I also got this mouse which is like stands up right. And this has actually really been really helpful for video editing. It also has, the, the, this is where the buttons are on the side. So this has been actually really nice because I used to have, a, I had this point in the summer where I was getting a lot of wrist pain because like the gimbal that I use at work was combined with all the typing and reading that I was doing. It was just a lot on my wrist. So the ergonomic keyboard really helped with that. So. I don't know if you're struggling with wrist pain, that really helped. I think that covers all my tech. I have like a basic Amazon ring light also. Again, like $10. <laughs> the random things on my desk. I have this little timer. I actually did, I don't wanna say steal because I don't think I did. One of my, the last place I worked, one of my old coworkers like had bought this for our office but then she left it there when she left. And then when I left, I just took it with me. <laughs> so Emma, if you want this back, let me know. But I just use it for sprints. Um, and like, you probably see me using it. It has like this shade and then it like has a, like a little ring when it goes off. Over here, I have just a, just a variety of things. I have a pencil sharpener that I haven't used in probably like four years. I have this pencil cup that has Again, pencils and markers I have not used in probably years, but this one has a little TARDIS on it. So that's fun. And then I have the most random sticky notes. I don't even know. Like just this random picture that my sister made when she was probably 10, she's like 15. This random sticky note quote, a birthday message, and then a Rumpelstiltskin drawing. I don't know. And then back here, I do just have some like pens and tape. This is where I keep all my writing craft books. So, so I have Save the Cat, classically. I have Telling the Truth, which I used in a creative writing story. I don't know. Or a creative writing class, sort of. It just talks about um, tragedy, comedy, and fairy tale, like the difference between that. I also have The Anatomy of Story, which I've heard great things about. I read this for a class also but I didn't, I don't really remember a lot of it. So that's what I'm gonna revisit in 2024. Um, but I also have the writer <laughs> novel and short story market. I need to get a new one of these. I got it in 2019 and it has just a lot of information about, um, like it has all these different literary agents. It's kind of like a base for that. And then it has mag like literary magazines and book publishers and different contests and stuff. Um, and a glossary of just like all these different words that are in the publishing industry. But it also gives you an access to the writer's market, which I don't know much about that. So it might be a scam, but seems like there's some good stuff happening. <laughs> it's the most trusted guide according to who I don't know. But then I have um, a book I have not written, which is The Secrets of Character. Haven't read that. Maybe, maybe I'll learn a secret. And then I have just a couple of like workbooks. So like write the story, this has writing prompts in it, vocabulary builder. And then this, <laughs> I, have, 
I have this pamphlet on hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, which is like a heart condition because a character in my book had this heart condition and I saw this book and I was like, might as well buy it. So that's up here. Then I have Story Genius and 25 Great Sentences, neither of which I have read, maybe one day. I have a dictionary, but I think the dictionary is just there for the vibes because who's using a dictionary? And then I have this, another like writing prompt kind of thing. A couple journals, a speaker that I've never once used in my life. And then I have 6,000, 60,000 baby names, which truly I use so often. I'll just like flip in there. And then I have another like, prompt book and then another dictionary from like the 80s so like it's really there for the vibes and then media and society which is about like media <laughs> it was a textbook um, then i have in here just a bunch this is like where i keep all my old notebooks um so i don't know how in depth i'm gonna go <laughs> with this a lot of old stories are in here oh this one really gets me Chapter four, they are dead. Sounds interesting. Chapter three, fire. She really had a lot to say. And she also made puzzles or like little, little fun mazes. Oh, the lights I have. Oh, we could do this section too if we want. Um, so the lights are just like LED lights from Walmart. <laughs> and then I got this whiteboard paper also on Amazon, I think. I just looked up like whiteboard paper. The metal is from when I got the silver key for my, from the Scholastic Arts and writing. You see that printout up there? This was the chart that said that that's where you found out if you made the list or not. And so I have it highlighted where my name is on the list of making, like getting the gold key. Candles. So this one is my current for Project Gas Station. I've been lighting this one. And then um, these two, Twilight Lavender and Sea Sage, were for Project Groove. Um, I would light those. I don't really watch a lot of these kind of videos, so I hope that that was good. I don't know. That's my writing space. Um, it's kind of, I've accumulated a lot of things over the years, but, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed my desk set up area writing accessories all the stuff that i use oh i didn't talk about any of the stuff that i do on the computer well i use scrivener and spotify that's pretty much it <laughs> served me well you definitely don't need all of this fancy stuff this is just me listening to all of the author tubers talking about how it's so good to create a ritual and um, make a writing space that you feel productive in and I totally second that but I also just want to make the message clear <laughs> that you don't need this to be a writer. I've written many a book in a library or on a dining room table on a couch surrounded by people like you can write anywhere but this is where I write right now sometimes. Sometimes I write in the car. <laughs> Let me know what your favorite part of your writing space is. What do you do to make it feel productive and cozy? Where do you spend most of your writing time? I'd love to know. Um, we really only have like five days left of November, you guys. This is wild. It's wild. So um, thank you for being here. I will, I will see you in the next one. Tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>